So I got two of the new 2020 IMAX and I kept one of them right, right, right there. And I also returned the other one. So stick to the end to find out which one I returned and which one I kept. Let's get into the benchmarks. The first iMac is specced with an 8-core i7 with a 5500 XT, which is the highest end base model you can get. The second iMac is specced with a 10-core i9 with a 5700 XT. Upgrading to the 10-core is an extra $400, and upgrading to the 5700 XT was an extra $500, which means I spent $900 extra to get a higher spec one. It's quite a lot of money. So let's see if the performance is actually worth the money. I ran Geekman Tri's CPU test and the 8-core got a single core score of 1,249 and a multi-core score of 8,416. The 10-core got slightly better results with a single core score of 1,257 and a multi-core score of 9,809. I then ran the Geekbench Metal test and the 5500 XT got a score of 42,869 while the 5700 XT got a score of 57,527. In Geekbench OpenCL, the 5500 XT got a score of 41,896 and the 5700 XT got a score of 54,423. In Cinebench, the 8-core 5500 XT combo got a score of 4,768, and the 10 core 5700 XT combo got a score of 5,536. In Unigen Heaven, the 8 core 5500 XT got 63.6 .6 FPS average, while the 10 core 5700 XT got 96.8 FPS average. So, if you really game on your iMac, the 5700 XT did provide a pretty significant jump in performance, but you would be spending an extra $500. All right, so now that I got the general benchmarks out of the way, let's talk about export times in Final Cut Pro. I exported a couple different types of uh, footage, which includes 4.5K Red Raw footage from Red's website, uh, my Magic Keyboard review, which is exported in 4K, and a 1080p project with a mix of different export compressions. From here on out, I'm gonna be calling the 8-core 5500XT model the iMac A, and the 10 core 5700 XT as iMac B. So for the red footage, I exported a one minute, five second clip uh, to ProRes 422. iMac A took one minute, 25 seconds, whereas iMac B took one minute and one second. I also did the same export with the same footage, but to H.264, and iMac A got one minute, 12 seconds, whereas iMac B took one minute and one second. Then I exported my Magic Keyboard review. It was a four minute, 15 second clip, and when exporting to ProRes 422, the iMac A took one minute, 48 seconds, and iMac B took one minute and 41 seconds. When exporting the same project to H.264, iMac A took two minutes, 13 seconds, and iMac B also took two minutes and 13 seconds. When exporting to HEVC with the same project, iMac A took two minutes, 55 seconds, whereas iMac B took two minutes, 53 seconds. I then exported some 1080p footage. When exporting a 1080p clip in H.264, iMac A took 33 seconds and iMac B took 33 seconds as well. When exporting that same 55 second clip to HEVC, iMac A took 36 seconds and iMac B took 34 seconds. Then I exported a longer 1080p clip to see if I could see a bigger difference in export times. It was still a 1080p clip, but this footage was 23 minutes and 25 seconds long. When exporting to H.264, iMac A took 2 minutes and 44 seconds, whereas iMac B took 2 minutes and 41 seconds. When exporting to HEVC, iMac A took 4 minutes 14 seconds, and iMac B took 4 minutes and 12 seconds. Also, I want to mention that during all these exports, all of these iMacs ran silently. So what do I think about these results? Well, for people exporting to YouTube and other web-based content, and you edit maybe a little bit of like high-res footage, I think iMac A is definitely more worth it. The export times on my normal projects in 4K took pretty much the same time on both machines. I'm kind of disappointed, but I guess the T2 chip or the video encoder is really bottlenecking these machines. The only difference in export times was when I was exporting red raw footage. Because of that, I think if you shoot higher res footage, sure, the export times are gonna be faster with those kinds of video files. If you're at that level with the budget of buying a really expensive camera that's over $10,000, I would imagine you would have the budget to also spend money on like maybe an iMac Pro or like a Mac Pro. If you use any of these high-end cameras, which computer do you use to edit this footage on? Please comment down below, I'm really interested. So general benchmarks did show a pretty big difference in performance, but when I tested these practical tests in Final Cut Pro with footage from a DSLR, I really didn't see a difference in speed. So because of the content creation that I work on, and because I 
I don't use 3D rendering, nor do I game on my iMac. You probably guessed it by now, but I returned my 10 core 5700 XT and kept my 8 core 5500 XT. So yeah, it's kind of disappointing to see that an iMac that's fully specced out didn't really export the footage that I use any quicker. So if you're like a prosumer type level person, I think the highest end base model is really good. And if you're at that like super professional range, but you still don't have the budget to maybe step up to an iMac Pro or like a Mac Pro, and you work with like raw or high res files, then I think the 10 core upgrade and the 5700 XT upgrade will be worth it for you. Let me know your thoughts below. I'll see you on the next video.